So next, we are joined with Chris Johansson, who is the project manager with C.D. Smith Construction here on the Ascent Project. So welcome, and thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me on, and thanks for uh, come picking this job to come tour. We're glad to have you out here. That's yeah, a pretty exciting one. Definitely very innovative. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 25 stories. So I know we took the lift up. We're now at the 17th story, I believe, correct? Yep, yep. We're on level 17 right now, and I think we'll be heading up to level 20. And so how involved are you in the pre-construction what was your role in that? Were you guys um, involved in kind of helping lay out how it would staging would go, how things would move through the whole project, or what was your kind of role in that pre-construction phase? Yep, so, so C.D. Smith was responsible for the BIM coordination for okay. the whole building. Oh. And that was everything, every single mechanical penetration that, that you see in the CLT to where the you know columns are located, et cetera. We were, involved with all of that design with the help of Timber Lab and Thornton Tomasetti and Corb, you know, every, everyone was involved over a year ago on the BIM design. Mm -hmm. And so we had all our MEP contractors on board very early and they assisted with, with layout of risers and also, so, so that got us to a complete BIM model, which we transferred to Timber Lab and they were responsible for coordinating the shop drawing process from KLH and VHOG so that they had their piece drawings and all of their shop drawings were based on our coordinated model. Perfect, so when that shows up at the job site as pieces arrived and they're flying in, there was a number on the wrapping. Is this sort of a numerical thing that lets you guys know a key to everything as you lay it all out? Yes, absolutely. It's very, very observant of you. Um, <laughs> So every single column, every single beam, every single piece of CLT has a piece mark to it, which coincides to the shop drawings, which ties into the BIM model. So everything on the job has a specific place that it needs to go. And there's not really any one column or beam that is replaceable with another one. So everything is very itemized. Okay, fantastic. It sounds like it takes quite a bit of coordination, but it's working well, huh? It does, yes. Good. Well, why don't we go up and we'll go up to the next floor and check that one out. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about construction schedule. So kind of curious how this compares to other projects that you've worked on. Uh, a typical concrete building of this size, we would do about a floor in eight days or 10 days. Mm -hmm. We're currently doing floors in five to six days wow. with the timber. Mm -hmm. We could walk through here, but you wouldn't be able to do any work. And as you can see, we already have crews starting to work on these floors. So our windows are up higher than mm -hmm. what would be typical on a concrete structure. And that allows all the interiors to start sooner. And so in terms of being able to place the columns, how quickly are you finding each column is being placed? So we fly up bundles of columns mm -hmm. off the truck. We have somewhere around three picks okay. for all of the columns. There's 64 columns on a floor. Wow. And once they're up here, we will set all of them in about a day. Wow, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then the beams follow suit. Maybe we talk a little bit of the staging in general. So you place the columns and then the beams, do they also come in, uh, come up in batches? Uh, yes, because they're bigger, we, we pick anywhere from one to two at a time and we'll stage them where they need to go. And then once we have them all up on the deck, we'll install all of the beams. There's 75 beams on a typical floor and we'll put those in in one day. Wow, okay. One day, that's pretty impressive as well. And I noticed with the connections, it looked like there's probably, what, three to four different type of um, beam to column connections that for at each level. Is that about correct? Um, yes, there... we, we have anywhere from a typical kind of saddle connection that uh -huh. we're standing around right now where the, the beam just kind of rests on a, a seat of the column. And there's basically that connection and then a knife plate bracket mm -hmm. connection where the beam itself has a notch cut out of it, and that allows the 
the knife plate and, and bracket to to seat on that. And if it's an exposed beam, we have the infill blocks underneath okay. that that allow for that beam to look like a solid piece of wood without seeing the connection. Yeah, the connections are quite elegant on this project for sure. I think the yeah. architect and engineer did a fantastic job. Yeah, we going back to the BIM work, we you know, we being Timber Lab, they even modeled the brackets and inside of the column. Because as we go up the building, the columns get smaller, the brackets start to get closer together and all the screws that are in the brackets actually were hitting. And so we had, through modeling, we moved brackets an eighth of an inch, a half inch up or down, and that would allow the screws to pass each other. And so it, going back to your point about it being elegant, Unfortunately, you don't really see that with the finished product, but the BIM coordination, the, the photos that we have from that are pretty impressive. When you think of having three, three uh, connections into one column and all of that is coordinated, there's 20 plus screws per bracket wow. going into one column. So it's pretty remarkable. So we talked a little bit about some of the pre-drilled openings for MEP and ductwork and other things. Um, so how has that been in terms of coordination? Has that worked really well? And have you started to run any of the MEP? Oh yeah, our, our MEP risers right now are up around level 15. Okay. And the, the coordination, as I mentioned before, was very long. It was about 60 meetings once a week for three to four hours at a time. And that was everything from just locating where, say, an electrical riser package would go to then coordinating that with the structure to say, oh, well, you can't put it that close to a, 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 a spline joint or it's, it's over a beam. And so things had to be shifted. But again, that was all done on, on computers and from everyone's offices. And to, to date, I don't believe we've had more than 10 that have been out of out of place and we're up to level 15 and there's probably 80 of four okay so we're, our, we're shooting a pretty high percentage right now yeah that pre-planning definitely has paid off it sounds like yeah. for on-site modifications you have had to make the very few you have how has that gone has that been pretty straightforward in terms of being able to make any modifications needed uh yeah we have we get everything approved through the structural engineer Gordon Tomasetti and Corb the architect and once we have that approval, then, you know, we're, we're off and, and making a fix. The process for that has been fairly painless. Uh, TT has been very uh, quick to answer us mm -hmm. and they actually have their third party inspector on site full time. Okay, so they're able to really jump out sometimes ahead of us to identify issues. And then that translates to having that answer on whatever the fix is right away. And it's been a very, very almost seamless operation for the, the few issues that we have had. Perfect, yeah. I mean, it sounds like we were talking about that in the other interviews, the importance of the teamwork on these type of projects because things move just so fast. Yep. And kind of real-time decisions have to be made and things move forward so quickly that it works well if the team is very cohesive and works well together. So it's great to hear from the job site's perspective it's working well for you yeah. as well. Absolutely. The project team has been fantastic from our own guys up to the design team and ownership you know everyone is is on board and and aiming for the same goal of you know turning this thing over hopefully ahead of time and you know under budget fantastic well can we go up to the top level yeah, check absolutely. that out wonderful let's head there now So having an engineering background, I am super intrigued by the column to column connection here. Could you talk about this a little bit and how this sure. goes in? Uh, so we have two different column to column connections. One is a four rod from the, bo the bottom of the upper column goes into the top column. Those get epoxied in and then we set the braces and it's done. <clears throat> the other detail like that one behind you, the, the column just is sandwiched from the column below and some screws go in and then we go and install a lot of screws about 5500 screws per floor and this is one I actually wanted to show you this is a 16 and 7 8 inch screw and it gets 
toenailed into the CLT and into the, the column. So we have around 1,400 of these per floor that we need to field install. And the guys actually have to install them vertically to get them to, to grab into the wood. And then they'll turn it onto an angle. And we have some jigs to, to make sure we have a 45 degree angle. And then they drive the, the screw in. And like I said, there's about 1,400 of these per floor. <laughs> so how long does that, does that take to install? Just a few days. The guy, the guy right now is doing, we have one guy doing it and he does around 800 screws a day. That's impressive. Yes. <laughs> so that brings me to a question about labor on this job. So how has labor harmony been? Um, seems like there's a lot of different folks in the project with different backgrounds mm -hmm. uh, and different skill sets. What, what are you looking for here in terms of what you have out here and the just overall harmony of the labor force? Sure. So we have a 12 man crew okay. doing all of the timber. Wow. That includes the guys on the ground that are rigging the material. <clears throat> and then the rest of the, the other 10 guys are up on the deck doing various activities from setting columns, beams or CLT to putting in the screws to doing waterproofing any sort of layouts, you know, anything like that. Within the crew, we've got iron workers and carpenters mm -hmm. doing the install. And then we have a couple laborers, you know, to, to just help out with the logistics of you know, moving things around and getting things into place <clears throat> as well as cleanup. That's a pretty great size crew. I mean, that's not very large compared to some other projects. How does that compare to other projects you've worked on? on a concrete so we did the concrete for the parking structure below us mm -hmm. and we had anywhere from probably 30 to 50 guys on site that doesn't include the MEP contractors uh, former contractors anyone like that so on the concrete we'd have about probably close to 60 70 guys okay. on site and we've got about 10 up here okay so what about construction site waste? How is that compared to other projects on a mass timber project? Um, do you feel it's similar or less? How does it feel to you? Uh, there's there's definitely some waste. The the difference is it's actually mass timber. Um, even, you know, these <clears throat> sled pieces here, this is technically waste, but it's nice mass timber. And other waste, I would say, is pretty minimal. The material comes wrapped in a plastic. And we do take that off right away. I know that's a topic of discussion with a lot of mass timber. Do you leave the columns wrapped? Do you leave the beams wrapped? We had a, a meeting with everyone when we first started and due to the sun tanning that goes on, they came out, ownership, the design team said, just take it all off. So that's why everything is, is bare now. Okay. And uh, so we you know, obviously have the plastic that gets thrown out, but there's not much else. So one thing I wanted to ask you about was moisture management. That seems to be um, something that is of interest to a lot of people. Can you kind of share how you've done moisture management on this particular project? Sure, yeah, it's, it's a big deal for mass timber. It's, you know, the staining on the underside of the timbers is a big, it's, it's a visual thing that <clears throat> it can be repaired. Um, we're obviously, as everyone, we're trying our best to, to keep the water from where it shouldn't be. Uh, it's inevitable, especially here in Milwaukee. And so we have a dedicated crew of guys that if it does rain, if it's a Saturday or unfortunately Sunday, that they'll come in within 24 hours and clear the deck off. Um, we're to a point now to where we have leaf blowers that we will blow it to kind of a central area. And then we have a sump pump that will pump it into uh, one of the storm drains going up the building so that's a great idea <laughs> something we kind of learned over time and as we got as we go up the building you can't just push it off the deck because we're 200 feet in the air at this point and uh, who knows where that water would go so we have to be much more cognizant of where the water is going to go and then uh, have have that plan have that you know the sump pump it has worked great and making sure the plumber is running his drains up with us mm -hmm. So that if it does rain, we we have that ability to to pump it down. That's great. And did the product come out with any type of a coating? All of the timber, whether it's from VHOG or KLH, comes sealed. Okay. And if we have to cut anything, we have sealer on site okay. as well. 
and um, we other than that the the timber you see is is the finished product okay and is there any moisture monitoring going on within the building to have so that you have a general idea of what the moisture content is in the lower levels as you move up yep we have especially as we get windows up and we're starting build out on the lower floors we have gypcrete now going which that puts a lot of moisture into the air so there's dehumidification that's ongoing and with that obviously there's <clears throat> sensors and thermometers and uh, you know all the the technology to make sure that we're controlling things the the right way that's probably really helpful then in kind of understanding how the the wood is responding and dealing with that moisture that's great yeah absolutely so last question is really uh, with the experience you gained here what are maybe one or two of the key things that are takeaways from this project that you'll take to your next mass timber project i would say my my biggest takeaway from this is the amount of upfront pre-planning <clears throat> that goes into something like this the all the design on the computer the logistics of landing things we've got much much tighter tolerances with weight and where we can stock things so everything from um, the timber layout to drywall to scissor lifts has all been engineered with tt and we we work with them almost daily to help us be as productive as we can to, and, and efficient and also maintain quality uh, obviously maintain safety it's number one so if we see something we can get with tt or core right away to change something up so it's it's safer for the guys and also you know another thing that isn't really typical in construction as far as i know is just the amount of publicity that this job has received <laughs> and the tours and interviews and everything else that, that we're doing now I feel like I'm a part-time tour guide. <laughs> well, we appreciate it, certainly. And I think those that will be watching the interviews, there's a lot here, a lot of information you share that will be great knowledge for them. Yeah. Uh, I think that was great advice for other contractors that are looking to get into this space and haven't done it before. I mean, you're a great example of someone who kind of jumped in, gave it a shot. It sounds like it's been pretty successful so far. Yeah. And something that you do again. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. You know, you just got to jump into it and figure it out and... And it's, you know, I joke about the tours and everything, but it's great. I, <clears throat> I understand the, the project and I, I love it. You know, it's, it's very humbling to be a part of such a, a massive new type of construction in the, in the country. And, you know, I definitely see this as a way of the future. So I'm glad to be a part of it. Well, thank you. I think the knowledge transfer is just so important for others that are looking to get into the space. So thank you for everything you've shared with us here today. We Absolutely. appreciate your time. All right. Thank you. I hope this project tour and team interviews have opened your eyes to a new sustainable building methodology. I always like to think how amazing would it be if we could change the story around climate issues for the next generation by just being cognizant of the materials we choose and the structures we build. And it's the forward thinking developers, architects, engineers, and contractors, like the amazing individuals we spoke with here today, who can drive this change by focusing on more innovative ways to build. There have been many advancements on the operational energy side, and now designers and owners have started to take a hard look at the materials they are using and how the right choices can further the cause to help us get to net zero carbon in the built environment. If you've been inspired here today to lean into the knowledge being shared and you want to learn more, feel free to reach out to Woodworks. We are staffed with engineers and architects that can provide free project assistance on any commercial and multifamily project really of any size. We look forward to helping you build a more sustainable future.